Welcome back to Long Island Talks on News 12 Long Island. Tonight, many Long Islanders are wondering if we're prepared to handle an outbreak of swine flu. Earlier this afternoon, I spoke with the State Health Care Commissioner, Dr. Richard Daines. New York City is the epicenter of the swine flu, thus making New York State a very important player in this role right now. Bring us up to date as to the severity of the spread. Well, in, in terms of numbers of, of probable or, or certain cases, uh, you, you have the New York City reports. Statewide outside of New York City, we reported three probable cases yesterday and eight more today. Of those, of those two are in Nassau County and two are in Suffolk County. Those are undoubtedly a small number of the total number of people Ill, Ill with this influenza, which turns out to be fairly mild in the patients we know that have it and not much different than the ordinary seasonal influenza. One of the interesting things is of, of the total number of tests we do, only about 25% of them are turning out to be this new H1N1 uh, swine origin influenza, and the rest are not either flu at all or that they're the last of our ordinary seasonal influenza cases. The, the message is not everyone that has flu-like symptoms has H1N1. They may have ordinary seasonal flu or just the typical cold and allergy that people get. Now, as I understand, you had a briefing with Governor Patterson, uh, I believe this morning, indicating that, uh, as you said, these cases are not that severe. They may actually be on the mild end of things. Does this allay some, uh, some greater concern that this could spread even faster here in New York? Well, the, the rate of spread is something different than how severely ill people become with it. And those are, so there are two different things that we're watching. The, the governor and I met at the Bronx County Courthouse this morning to update people in New York City on it. Uh, there, undoubtedly, this is becoming quite widespread. We know that there were several hundred children ill at St. Francis in Queens. And the, these small number, single digit cases around the state are probably just the first of, of quite a few people that will have the illness. The question is how many progress to severe problems for which they might be hospitalized or become mortalities, and we just don't know enough yet. The, the Mexican cases sounded like many people became very severely ill. Of the first hundred or so in the United States, we have that one tragic report from Mexico of a young child that died, but other than that, it doesn't seem to be progressing to serious illness that puts people in the hospital or puts their lives at risk. But again, when we only have seen the first hundred cases or, or so, we don't know whether we'll gradually see more of that or not. Doctor, the CDC apparently changed its definition of probable cases, and from what we understand, at least in Nassau County, they're saying that means by definition there are no more probable cases here. Uh, are you applying that definition statewide? Well, I, we, we follow the CDC case definitions. I, I'll need to speak to Dr. Maria Carney, so I'm, I'm right up to date on that. The CDC at one point had a case definition of probable that they changed the following day. You may be referring to that. Uh, but the, but the, two, the two cases that we have previously reported as probable in Nassau County stand. I think Dr. Carney is probably speaking of additional cases that were moving in that direction under the, the prior CDC definition and don't now. This is to be expected early in, a, early in an outbreak with what is a new and novel strain. The CDC would be, would be wrong to not change their definitions as they learn more about the illness. Okay, and Dr. What are the next steps? Uh, should there be an escalation of what's going on here that would actually trigger a more calculated response? Well, the, the response to date has been very calculated. We are, we are implementing plans that are established and that we have exercised a number of times. So the, we're, we're right along with the plan now. Uh, we'll, we'll be watching things like this. Do we have uh, more people becoming severely ill so that we might have demands on the hospitals uh, that we have to provide special resources there? We have a very large state stockpile of antiretroviral drug or antiviral 
antiviral drugs. And, and if, if we have lots of patients that need those, that may be more than are available through the normal pharmacy supply chain, and then we would make emergency supplies available. And another question will be, will be uh, uh, community mitigation. Uh, immediately there were issues of school closure. Of course, they faced that first in New York City and made wise decisions. We had our first school closure in the state uh, uh, south of Syracuse, where a school of about a school district with about 800, 850 children, they decided to close that school for the rest of the week. And we'll be watching statewide to see if there are any other instances where we need to close a school or perhaps take other community-wide actions. And uh, Commissioner, in fact, there was community action, as I understand. Uh, taken in upstate New York, a healthcare worker had been diagnosed and at a facility there. Apparently colleagues were given preventative medicine. Do you see that you, happening yes. in the school system though? What about the school districts? Uh, should a child become ill? Does that mean everyone goes on meds? No, our, our recommendation is that if people have a potential exposure, if they have risk factors for severe disease that you consider prophylaxis in that group. So we had a health care worker in a nursing home in Orange County who is a probable case of, of H1N1. And because almost by definition people in that nursing home have some impairments, uh, we decide, it was decided there to prophylax all of the residents of the nursing home and the employees who of course who are moving from unit to unit and seeing patients. In a, in a school on the other hand full of, of healthy young people there wouldn't be an indication for prophylaxis in that group. Joining us once again is Sam Kelly with the American Red Cross Nassau County Chapter. Uh, what the doctor was just uh, speaking about especially with regard to any kind of mass situation, uh, let's talk about school situations. I mean suppose there's a kid in school uh, and it spreads, you keep your kid home, what should parents be doing to plan uh, for that potential situation or you know just even to plan if there's nothing going on? <laughs> well, but, what Besides having the things at home in case you're stuck at home, uh, people really need to think about what would I do if my child can't go to school, I work, what am I going to do? Are they going to go to grandma's house um, or am I going to have to take off from work so that I can be at home with my child? These are things everyone has to look at. Every case of course is different with everyone, but it's things you need to think about. You know, always need to keep in mind what would I do in a disaster, in this case uh, a flu outbreak. And if your child is ill, um, if your child's Aaron ill, they have, better, <laughs> they have better stay home. Yeah. Um, the only place they should be going besides home is to see their pediatrician. Yeah, to do that. We understand that. Okay, thank you very much for joining us. And for more information on tonight's show, visit our website at news12.com and click on numbers and links. You're watching Long Island Talks on News 12 Long Island. Welcome back to Long Island Talks right here on News 12 Long Island. Joining us once again is Sam Killey with the American Red Cross, the Nassau County Chapter. Thanks for being with us. Uh, you. you know, we were discussing uh, what goes on with parents in the, in, in the last break here. But what about the Red Cross's role um, here locally? I, obviously, I would assume that you're speaking with Suffolk County, with New York City. What goes on behind the scenes? Well, in Nassau Chapter, we're part of the Metro New York region. Uh, which encompasses New York City, all of Long Island, Westchester County, and part of Connecticut. So since day one, we've all been talking to each other. Um, every chapter is, of course, talking to the emergency managers and, and health departments within their uh, individual areas. And, you know, we're all working together to uh, make sure that we're there for each other if need be. So you're really on the front lines. I mean, anything that comes out of New York City, since New York City is truly the epicenter of this virus, you're getting that firsthand. So if there needs to be any action taken uh, or you're called in for any reason, I mean, you'd be right on the front lines there, right? You know, that's the great thing about the Red Cross. There are 700 chapters across mm -hmm. the country. Mm -hmm. Whenever a chapter needs assistance, the other 699 are there to, to help. If this turned into something even more widespread, and we really don't know anything could happen at this point, um, uh, as far as a vaccine, they say it could be as, as far as six months away. Mm -hmm. What would the Red Cross be doing other than, than I, I guess, you just move in and you help the counties and the, and the local governments? Yeah, we're, we're doing, you know, getting preparedness information out like we are would right now. Would anything change, though, with the level of participation? Well, the level would be, you know, we could, you know, bring our volunteers to help 
you know, as I said earlier, to move supplies around uh, to help supplement mm -hmm. emergency managers' situations. Um, as I said before, we wouldn't be doing any medical care or anything mm -hmm. like that. That's not our role. Would our the role volunteers, though, be taking Tamiflu, for example, or anything uh, to prepare for actually working with people like that? Oh, well, that, that would be up to... Uh, you know, medical professionals as, okay. as to what steps we take with that. All right. Thank you very much for being with us tonight. Thank you. I uh, really appreciated all this great information, uh, Sam. And thank you for watching. I'm Judy Martin. Please stay tuned. Colleen McKay is up next with you.